We are going over how to solve one-step equations. My learning target is I can write and solve one-step equations. So how to solve a one-step equation? You are going to write the equation, and then you are going to identify the variable. And our goal is to isolate the variable, get it by itself. So to isolate the variable, you need to conduct the inverse operation. So the opposite operation that is happening. So for example, if x is being added to 5, you're going to subtract 5 to get x by itself. So after you've done that, whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other to keep that equation balanced on both sides. And then you need to make sure you check your answer by plugging the solution back in, substituting, and then you are going to graph your solution. Now we need to remember that the inverse operation of addition is subtraction. The inverse of subtraction is addition. The inverse of multiplication is division, and the inverse of division is multiplication. All right, we are going to do some examples together, and then you can always pause before I work out the examples on the bottom and then check with me. So it says, solve for x, x plus 3 equals 8, check and graph your solution. So I asked myself, what is happening, what operation is happening to x? It's being added to 3, so to get x by itself, I want that 3 to go away. So to get rid of 3, oops, to get rid of 3, I have to subtract 3, so that gives me 0. And then I just have x left, and then whatever I do to one side, I've got to do to the other to keep it balanced. So 8 minus 3 equals 5. So now that I've gotten my solution, I need to make sure that 5 is actually correct by substituting it back into the equation. So x plus 3 equals 8. So I substitute 5 for x. 5 plus 3, does that equal 8? It does. So my solution is correct, and then I need to graph it. All right, example number 2 says solve for x, 4x equals 12, check and graph the solution. So I have 4x equals 12, x is being multiplied by 4, so I'm going to do the inverse, which is divide. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. So just like um, 1 times 3, for example, is 3, 1 times x is x. So I know that I've isolated this. It's just x now. Then I'm going to divide the other side by 4 and get 3. So I'm going to go back and check that. Is 4 times 3, 12? It is. So I know that my solution is correct. And then I'm going to graph it. So again, I know that this ends up just being x because 4 divided by 4 is 1. So then I have 1 times x. So 1 times x, just like you would do 1 times 3 equals 3, 1 times x equals x. So this becomes just x. 12 divided by 4 do to the same do to one side. You have to do the other. 12 divided by 4 is 3. All right, feel free to pause and do these practice problems um, and then check with me. 
So all of these, we're going to solve for x, check, and graph the solution. So this is x minus 8 equals 24. So I'm going to do the inverse and add 8, get 0. Do that to the other side and get 32. So x equals 32. So I'm going to check that. And don't just assume if you can't do the mental math, you need to come over here and you need to check that this is actually correct. 12 minus 8 is 4. Bring down the 2, so 24 equals 24. So this is correct. Don't go too fast where you just assume that you are correct. Because you may not be. You may make a mistake. We all make mistakes. And then we're graphing that solution. All right, number two, 5x equals negative 35. I'm going to divide both sides by 5. Negative divided by a positive is a negative, so this will be negative 7. And I need to check that this is correct. So a negative times a positive is a negative. So my solution is correct. And I need to graph it. All right, number three, negative six, x equals 72. Divide both sides by negative six. All right, so this is 12, negative 12, because we're dividing a negative and a positive. So we are going to check that. Sorry, that's a negative 12. So 12 times 6 is 72. A negative times a negative is positive. So this is correct. And we're going to graph it. All right, number four, I'm going to do keep, change, change. So this is x plus 4 equals 7. So I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides. So this is x equals 3. So I'm going to check that. Keep, change, change, so 7 equals 7. So my solution is correct, and then I'm going to graph it. And that closed circle means it does equal that number. We'll talk about open circles when we talk about inequalities. All right, 5 x is being added to 13, so I'm going to subtract 13 on both sides. Keep, change, change. So I'm going to add these and keep the sign. So x is negative 55.
So when I have different signs, I subtract. So 55 minus 13, and I take the sign of the larger absolute value. So this is negative 42 equals negative 42. So my solution is correct. And we're going to graph it. All right, number six, negative 125 equals 25x. X is being multiplied by 25, so I'm going to divide both sides by 25. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. So 25 goes into 125 five times. So I'm going to check if that is correct. And I did that math um, mentally. So this is a good point where my mental math may not be correct. So I want to go over here and check that. And it was correct. A negative times a positive is a negative. So negative 125 equals negative 125, and I'm going to graph my solution. All right, let's get to the word problems. So it said Zachary went to the bookstore, and he bought 12 books. He spent a total of $126. How much was each book? So each book tells me that I'm multiplying. So I'm going to write my equation 12, the amount of books, times x, the price. That's the variable. We don't know the price of each one. And then the total price we spent was 126. So x is being multiplied by 12. So we're going to divide both sides by 12. So money standards, this is $10.50. So let's go and check that. So that is 126. And then I'm going to graph my solution. All right, last one, number eight. Vanessa needed to buy clothes for a newborn baby. She started with $45. While she was shopping, a lady handed her some money to help. She ended up having um, $60 to spend. How much did the lady give her? So she had $45. The lady gave her some unknown amount and then had $60. So I'm going to subtract 45 because X is being added to 45. So we think our answer is $15. So 45 plus 15, does that equal 60?
it does, so my solution is correct, and then we need to graph it. All right, thanks for watching, and I will go back in and fix my grammatical error here.